Chelsea Dickens, good evening, sir. Welcome to the Fight Buzz team. Welcome back. We should start by saying Happy New Year. Happy New um, Year. Hope we all had a good one. Was it a good one, boys? Delta, <laughs> thank so, you. You all went out and painted the town red, yeah? What? Oh, well, listen, I, hey, yeah, I don't want to give too much away. Anyway. I was about to say something. Hey, no, Boris, I was inside. I was uh, following the rules. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> good. Good boy. Wouldn't I expect anything less. Um, Jazza, celebrating a golden contract win. I bet Christmas was all right for you. Yeah, it's been mad busy. Just been trying to cash in. Now, as a, after the fight in, in, the, in the past, I've let me momentum die down. So now I'm just trying to cash in and do, do a bit of work. But my kids are missing me as well. So it's... Um, been work, 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 but I've had a nice Christmas together, a nice New Year. I look forward to getting back in, in the gym and working towards the final. Well, let's talk about who you might be fighting and who could be coming down the pipe in a few minutes, but let's just kick off with that golden contract. I've got to say, what a tournament, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. It's delivered all the way through, but um, to find to see yourself walking out as the winner, I've got to ask, every fighter would say at the beginning of that tournament, oh, I'm in it to win it, I believe I can win it, doesn't matter who's put in front of me, but it's a long road to walk to actually have your hand raised at the end of it. No, I, I knew from the start that when I'd not be, I just, I've just got a lot of confidence in myself, you know. And um, I, 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 well, I, well, I went in it when I was the second person to go in it. It was only me and Ryan Walsh in it when I when I agreed. So at that point, I still knew I was going to win it. So <laughs> no one was even in. And then when people was added to it, I said, "I, I boxed that higher levels than this, and I, and I know that I will win it." I was surprised actually for, for the amount for the for the perks that, that, that were coming out of it at the end. I was surprised that they weren't like um I don't want to be disrespectful, but um I expected a lot more opposition, you know. Higher caliber. Yeah. Not no not, not oh. disrespectful, you know. Yeah, no, no, that's I think that's a fair comment, Dean. I don't know um how much of the golden contract you saw, but to come away just to come out of a contract as sorry to come out of a tournament as highly regarded as that, with your arm raised. I mean, you've 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 done a good job, haven't you? Yeah, I think I don't. Do you know? I'm not going to pretend I didn't follow your kind of weight class one too much. I kind of saw little bits, but I followed the light heavy one more so. You know what I mean? It's um, it it was a final that I, I was saying to Jazza before, just before we came on air. When I went to that, because I was at the final, and say openly and honestly to Jazz, I, I couldn't call it before the fight. You know, you, you some it's one of those where on the drive over, I'm thinking, yeah, Jazz is going to win this because of this and that. But then you start thinking about, well, if he gets in a little bit and starts working his body or whatever, then you know, and you start going both ways. Um, but ultimately, you've come away as the winner, and since then, there's been a few few names thrown towards you and I've, I saw you I think you posted something on Instagram the other day about who people are who people are possibly touting you for you know we both know the names that are going to come out in a couple of minutes are those the fights now that you want to see yourself going for definitely um, the people who uh, every day I get a message now I get a message like a lot a lot of messages every day about when you're going to fight Josh Wellington is it, is it Wellington next is it Navarrete next WBO or the IBF. That's why I see. I see the WBO or the, or the IBF. That's that's why I see. You know, I'm ranked in three of the governing bodies. So I can't see nothing but a European, um, nothing but higher than the European title, world title, or whatnot. Because I already have the European. I've gone past the British. So yeah, that's what I'm looking for, for world titles now. I've got to say, just what just one thing on the um, on the golden contract final. Um, from ringside, there was one supporter. <laughs> In particular, for you, Jazza, that was quite vocal. Yeah, uh, he, he, let, he let everyone know he was there, but fair play. Um, Tony Belly was really cheering you on throughout that. Yeah, did you see him in the, <laughs> did you see him in the semi finals? He was like, <laughs> he was, he was like Bruno in um, the McClellan Ben fight, though he's banging on the canvas. <laughs> That's what he was like at one point in the semi final. I was in the corner, I was in the clinch, and I could see him, and he was shouting. And then the bell went, so I walked back to the corner, and by the time I got back to the corner, he was in the corner shouting. <laughs> so yeah, he's very vocal, and he's like that with all of his yeah. fighters he, he manages. He's uh, he back to yeah. properly, you know. Yeah, Tony's um very vocal. Is it? Yeah, he he he's, he's like that. What? But you're you you're you're with MTK, are you not? No. Yeah, well, I'm advised by MTK and managed by Tony, so I'm very lucky. To okay. Be okay. 
Nice, nice, nice. Well, that's a hell of a team. Just for people who don't know, and I, you know, do you know, I'm, I'm going to kind of put myself into into that bracket because you see these days there are advisors, agents, managers, promoters, all who play little different roles within. Like you say, you, 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 you're lucky to have such a good team around you. But just what is it that those guys do? That, you know, to, that, that is different from one another. Well, they can do. I, I can't tell you because I don't do their job. You know what I mean? They, I, I trust hundred <laughs> percent. You know what I mean? I, I trust. I don't even ask questions. They do what they do, and they get me the fight. You know, um, I believe they get me a world title fight. I don't even ask. I trust them that much. And I know they got me best interest at heart. So I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll, ask them, I'll ask them when I see them. <laughs> You're not planning to move into into boxer management then <laughs> later down the line. Uh, so if it, let, let's move let's move on then to who could be coming down the pipe. You mentioned Josh Warrington before. Let's say let's say that's the fight that you set your sights on. I want Josh next. That's the way you know. I assume what you turn to MTK and say that and 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 leave it with them. Yeah, well, I, mean, I know we managed Tony and, and MTK. They they were the um, they've already sort of plans apart out for me. There's not too much I can say right now, but these plans are part out a part out for me. And um, you can see where I'm going in the rankings with the IBF and the WBO. So um, I think it looks like it's going to be world title next. That's, that's the plan. I don't want. I want anyone who's got a world title. I just want the world title. You know what I mean? That, that's it. I'm going to start shouting. Like, <laughs> I want Warrington's head on a plate. But I just I say, I want the title, you know? <laughs> you've just given us our little clip for social. I'm just going to use that one line there that you just said. <laughs> <laughs> What what do you reckon, Nick? So, listen, I, I don't want to disrespect. Don't, don't Jazz, I don't say this is is disrespectful. People do. They see the heavier weights. You know, they get more attention. The heavies and the and the light heavyweights. And you know, I, I guess the last couple of years we've seen a lot more action in the welterweights. Um, to be honest, you know, it's globally. But the middleweights, they they will always pull rank. But it's it's genu generally kind of thought of. I think that the lighter weights is for your your hardcore fans, or at least it has been traditionally. But the last few years, I think with the likes of Josh Warrington, the fight with Carl Frampton, you know, the other fighters that are down there, I mean, yourself were, were in with a hell of an operator a few years ago um, in Rigondo. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of activity down there now. And Dean, I just want I just want to put, pick your brains a little bit on it. When you see the the level of talent down there, it, with the coverage now of social media and Sky Sports and BT and, and everyone else, there's some there's some really big fights that you can put on. At the lighter weights that I think might pull in the, the more casual fans. So what are you like one twenty six and what one twenty two? What what were you? One twenty six, yeah, featherweight. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. What's, what's it called down there? Featherweight. Featherweight is one twenty six. So okay, Yusuf Kamari's in that same weight, and okay, okay, you know, like I'm just trying to get my brain around. Is Hopi Price? Those are they? They're a little bit way down the ladder from yourself. And Kane Baker, I think they have a super feathers or feathers. Is that right? So I'm just trying to sure. navigate myself. No, do you know what? There's some good boys down there. Because look, when you're talking about that featherweight, you got Isaac Dogbo, uh, who I know quite well. He obviously lost twice to Navarretto. Navarretto is a little bit of a machine. He doesn't look much, but he's a little, he's a little bit of a nasty bit of work, you know. Um, I remember the, the Jackal was down there when he had the same kind of weight. Uh, I think Dogbo was meant to fight the, the Jackal Carl, Fra Carl Frampton. Um, and then obviously, you know, Rigando and all those boys. It's, it's definitely an interesting division, you know what I mean? But obviously, when I wrap my brain and I start thinking about the people who are there, but just off the quick whim, I'm, obviously I'm like heavyweights, cruiserweights, middleweights, super middle. I'm kind of a little bit up there, but I do know most of the, 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 the kind of fighters, a little bit, you know, the 130s. One. If you kind of push me, I start to remember who is who, you know what I mean? But I mean, that's nice, interesting time. Look, you won that competition. Um, you what is it? You got a contract with top rank as well, right? It's 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 we're, we're gonna um, sit down. I would, I would, it's, we've got options, you know. Because go yeah, obviously, well, you know, what they were saying was the winner gets a contract with this, and you know, and they, you know, they were saying so on. So, you know, there's options that so if that's the case, if those are the options, then the Navarro fight becomes a little bit more easier um, because, you know, MTK works alongside uh, top rank, you know, so it's that is, you know, we're on the same side of the street. So, you know, 
but obviously there's other guys to fight. I'm not sure who who did you say the other belt holders was at that way? Josh Warrington and there's also the WBC. Uh, Stevenson. Guys. That that means Shakur Stevenson will be the other belt holder because he wanted to try and fight. Um, he wanted to try and fight um Josh Warrington as well. He might have gone up. I think it's somebody else. I think he might have moved up. I think. Yeah, that's the thing. He might have moved up. I'm not sure, but I remember he was looking for Warrington at the time and that never materialised. Is um I might I might be out of sync here. Was was Leo Santa Cruz not a champion and Gary Russell? Gary Russell, that's him. Maybe Gary Russell. That's him. Yeah. Because he was talking about going up to one thirty and one three five to fight um Javonte Davis or something. I think it's one thirty, isn't it? In fact, Leo Santa Cruz did go and fight him on today. <laughs> I, think it's stupid. But... I don't watch boxing, lads. I, I don't know nothing about it. I, I have never watched Navaretti. I just don't, don't watch the sport. So I don't know nothing about it. Is it? it. You, don't, you don't watch boxing? What the know. hell? When you were saying about the featherweights before, it's only natural. I even think about the heavyweights. It's the, the machines. It's like watching two Transformers fight, isn't it? It's a spectacular. <laughs> two men so yeah. big fighting. It's so, any, Anything can but, happen. So I see. I yeah. understand that. That's why people... Love the heavyweight, you know. What about the big fights down at your level, though? Because a couple of years ago, um, whenever it was, I remember it. Cause, correct me if I'm wrong, Dean, but on the same night as Dillian White versus Derek Chisora was Carl Frampton versus Josh Warrington. Yeah, and you know there was, 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 was the old yeah, year. yeah, and there was there was real kind of contest for you know is everyone just going to go and watch the heavyweights because you know they're the heavyweights. But then you saw that Frampton Warrington fight, and listen, the White Chisora fight was amazing. Like it, it, it absolutely delivered a massive knockout and everything else. But the Frampton Warrington fight, I don't think anyone saw that coming. That it was just a firecracker. Did you did you see? Did you catch that one? I didn't watch the fight, but I didn't see the outcome happening, not at all, because I sparred with both and I did not see that happen at all. I think Josh Warrington has done done an amazing, amazing job because. I've written him off three times. I think it was Lee Selby as well. I said, no, he won't yeah. win that. I said, he won't win for Hampton. Somebody else. I said, he won't win. <laughs> I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying he won't beat me as well, so we'll have to find out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, so what does that say about you, Jazza? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, to, be, to be fair, you've so got to have that mindset. You've got to have it, haven't you? Yeah. Huh? You've got to have that mindset. You can't... You can't um, you can't say I want to be a boxer, but I don't want to fight him because he's a bit good. <laughs> no, no. You know what? But what I will say to that is sometimes there is planning and strategy to get into where you want to be. You know, sometimes the hard way is not about who you fight. Sometimes it's about who you don't fight that gets you to where you want to be. And when you're there, the thing what kicks in is the champion's mentality. When you become a champion, they always say, your, you know, your fighting and mentality raises another ten percent. So once you become world champion, you've done what you set out to do. Now it's about saying to yourself, you know, they say, well, look, I'm a world champion. You know, I felt I was unbeatable before. Now with this title, I've got something more to hold on to. So I'm going to train harder. I'm going to push harder. I'm going to run longer. I'm going to train smart. You know, I'm going to eat better. I think the champion, the, the champion's mindset is different. They say. So, you know, if you navigate around the board. And then you get to that position. They always say, listen, you get another 10% from the champion when they're a champion. So sometimes you've got to play the long and smart game and navigate around. Some people take the hard route and they manage to, you know, get through all the obstacles and become champion. Some try and take the hard route and get their bloody ass knocked the hell out. <laughs> and just, you know, it, it's a, and it just becomes a difficult road. But I mean, you know, the, the, you know, the fight games, there's no easy way uh, to anything. But there are definitely easier opponents to face and be tactical and smart to get around and navigate the board. And when you're at the top, then you look down and say, you know what? I'm going to fight that guy. I'm going to fight that guy and navigate. Listen, Canelo is a master at that game. Forget about it. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we had speaking about Floyd the other week. He, he did it as well. But let me just stay on the, on the, um, the Jazza Dickens, um, Josh Warrington fight, if it happens, how how would that fight in your head go, Jazz? Because Josh is known for like, just comes at you. Just like, there's not really, a, you know, I'm probably doing him a bit of a disservice there. He's obviously a great boxer, but when you watch his fights, he, he just comes, just comes and, and fights you and bashes you up. 
So <laughs> what's your <laughs> strategy? What's your strategy on that? You know what you know, don't you? You see things in fighters, you know, I've done a lot of rounds, sparring, you just know things, you see things in fighters, but, but you know how you can, you can't explain it, you've just got a natural talent for it, and I know my natural ability, and who, who I can be, who I can become when I fight, and, and my time, and I'm, I think I'm all wrong for just one thing, I think I'm all wrong for him, I've been calling his name for the, for a good while now, and uh, I've made nothing, nothing, because I know I'm all wrong, just like Galahad's all wrong for him too, he doesn't want that fight either. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'll just be myself when I, when I fight Wellington, and, and that that's what will get me to win. I've got I've got no um, when I think about the fight, I don't think not other than yeah, that's a winnable fight for the world title. I don't 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 think too much into it. I will do this. I will do that. I'll just be myself and take take my belt. Do you think if it weren't for COVID slowing everything down, do you think you may have um, you know obviously the golden contract? I think I'm right in saying was postponed for a little bit and it took a bit longer to finish than maybe anticipated. Do you think if COVID hadn't happened, you'd have had that world title shot by now? Possibly, but I can't complain because whilst everyone's um, struggling, I get it and I, and I feel sorry for a lot of people, but it's been the best year of my life, boxing and family-wise. I've had more time with family and I've, and I've been lucky. I've been one of the few lucky ones I've nice to be fighting on Sky Sports and I was lucky that Sky Sports and MTK put the show on and they still went at every show although the whole group was happening so I was one of the lucky ones one of the lucky few so it's been the best year of my life um, and I think I possibly will become world champion during, during COVID That's quite a, a statement isn't it Dean there's not a lot of fighters that have, that, have, that, have, that have had that look but at least he's honest Trust me I was listening to that story and I was thinking wow man I think uh, we're on the other side of the fence, most of the boxing world. You know that? You're saying how happy it's been. It's been a horrid 2020. And I mean, uh, there's a lot of other people who echo that. But, you know, like, you was able to fight through it, um, you know, have your fights, win your tournament, and like you said, spend time with your family and so on. So, but there's, you know, fighters out there that's not had the opportunity to fight and can't get on shows um, and stuff like that. So, you know, it's different, you know, different uh, sides of the coins, I mean, but... It's, I'm sure it's a very rare thing to hear when someone says everyone wants to forget 2020. Most people you talk about, they want to forget 2020. But what they don't understand is 21, for most of it, is probably going to be the same as 2020. So, yeah, you know, I, I don't... Uh, I, want, I want the same. I'm the type of person. I am creative. I think creative people will survive in this situation. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. gonna just go and lie, lie down in the corner because times are hard. I think the creative will survive. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, there's, certainly a, there's certainly a case for that. I mean, it's obviously not as easy for everyone, but at the same time, you know, you've you've worked with what you've had put in front of you. Let me um, let me just ask you because I'm, I'm conscious of keeping you too long. I know it's, 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 it's kicking on a little bit, but I, w- I wanted to speak to you. We'll come back to the Josh Warrington fight before we sign off. A previous fighter, that his, his name came up before, was was Rigondo, and and uh, he was he was a fighter that. He was almost avoided by a lot of people. Um, do you, when you when you got in there with him, he was. I remember the articles at the time saying such and such a fighter didn't want a part of him. Such and such a fighter didn't want a part of him. He was tipped to go on and come from this Cuban fight school, and he was going to be this and that. What did you think of him when you were in there? Like every other opponent that I fight, I thought this is a winnable fight, and. Um, uh, I can just say I got a broken jaw. My coach pulled me out. I was disappointed at the time. Um, very disappointed. It's not much really to it. The same balls off. Um, when in there, uh, expecting to become champion of Wales and take all the conquers and and beat the man that no one will fight. Um, but but I was um I was beaten, beaten by the better man. That's that's all I can say about it. It's painful, painful for me to talk about losing for world title, losing any time. I hate to lose, losers for fucking losers. I, I hate losing, but. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is, and I'm I'm happy to fight because I took a good experience and I learned a lot from it. I learned a lot about boxing, you know. <laughs> Fucking hell, boxing can be ruthless at times, but um, yeah, yeah, I come to it and I'm back in that position, and, and I'm grateful to be back in that position. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to off the world title. I'm I'm further down the line than I've ever been. Uh, I'm ranked higher than I've ever been ranked. So yeah, thank you, Jesus. Boxing is a strange sport, as you guys know better than anybody. Um, and who knows? Who knows what's going to happen in the future? But if there was a shot at redemption against Rigondo, 
Is that something that you just like to do for you? Because it obviously yes. hurt you bringing that up. So would you like to do that? 100%. I think about these things. I had, I had a dream about, I'm not going to name him, but somebody who I fought a few, a few weeks ago, I had a dream and he died in his sleep. And I was, <laughs> I was crying in my sleep. And someone said to me, what's wrong? And I said, I'll never get revenge. And that, that, that's just my... <laughs> he died, and, and I'll never get revenge. That was That's my mindset. <laughs> Bad too. Fucked up. Wow. Did you... What did you think? Because I, 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 I... And, and I appreciate you saying that you don't watch much boxing outside of your own... Sorry, inside your own division. But I'm assuming you did see his matchup with Lomachenko, which came a while later. Yeah. And, and yeah. he was... What did you think of that? Because, Dean, do you remember the, the Rigondeaux-Lomachenko fight? Everyone was saying that before the fight, that there was almost 50-50 people saying Rigondeaux is going to bring out something special and other people were saying Loma's too big and he won't get the credit for when he does win. Then that basically happened. Loma did win and a lot of people said, well, of course he was going to win. He's too big for him. But what did you think about the way that fight went down? Hmm. I think what did, what did, I'm I'm a bit baffled. What did he do? Did he make him come up a weight or did he make him go down a weight? Something was in the oh, he came up, well, he went up to he went up to lightweight, didn't he? And um he's and, now, isn't he? Is he a lightweight now? Is he is, is, is he competing at lightweight? He's bantam weight now. Oh, is he? Yeah. Um so anyway, yeah, Longa made him quit on his stool, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah um, so then I've, well, I don't know. Listen, I feel like, I think, yeah, because he was probably, he was fighting at Bantamweight before, wasn't he? Did you fight him at Bantamweight or Featherweight? Super Bantamweight, 8 stone 10, and he went up to 9 stone, about 9 stone 2, I think he fought 9 stone 4. Yeah, so, you know, he, he was the older guy, I think, you know, um, he had about a year layoff. I think all the, all the, all the, all the chips are stacked in Lomachenko's favour anyway, going into that fight. He should have been able to allow, been allowed to come back and have a warm up fight and then go into that fight because Lomo was fighting and he he was campaigning and winning good fights and he was on the ascendance. You know what I mean? So I felt like you know being the older man, if you've been out so long, there's always going to have a a, a a negative effect. You know what I mean? And then going up, putting on weight, so you're going to be that much slower, um, and you're playing into the cards of the other fella. You know what I mean? So. I felt like when 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 that fight was made and I heard about it, I always had a little thing that mm, yeah, you know you know the possibility he's got a good chance, but you know that layoff does that play a part? And on the night we saw it play a part. Does the weight play a part? Yeah, it makes him slower. Probably couldn't move as well, not as fast, and just age for the time. You know what I mean? Catches up to people. It does it does? But um, I'm guessing you watched that fight as well, Jazz. What, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah. I watched it. I said from the start, he's not big enough because I, I was I was admiring Lomachenko's work at the time. He was doing great work. He was just making every everybody quit, he? Really. And um, yeah. he weren't necessarily knocking people out. He was, but he was just making them quit because he was too good and and he was too big. And I knew that. I knew that Magondo was naturally smaller anyway by fighting him. And I just thought like, I want to watch it to see how far he can go. If he can beat Lomachenko, then I'll be. I'll be amazed, you know what I mean? I, I tuned in to see if he could upset the odds, but I, I knew that he, he wouldn't be able to beat Lomachenko. Can we just can we just talk for one moment about that lightweight division at the moment that Loma is a part of, even if he's not necessarily at the top table at the minute? What a division. It's a it's a yeah, star-studded division, mate. Listen, there's 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 too many, there's there's a lot, there's there's an array of young talent in that division. You know, obviously we watched Ryan Garcia against Luke Campbell on, um, on the weekend. And he done good. He came back from that big knockdown because that was a big knockdown. And then he managed to get up and he showed Luke Campbell no respect. He walked forward and just let his hands go. And um, I think the speed and obviously the power in that kind of concerned Luke Campbell because, you know, he boxed and he left his body open all night because, you know, he was guarding his head so much. He left his his body because he was getting hit to the body earlier and it was only a matter of time that them body shots was going to start to tell but when you're talking about that division Javon A Devin Haney Tiafuma Lopez Shakur Stevenson listen it's going to be mad in time it, it's going to be interesting to see who becomes top of the pile with those young boys there 
Um, and, and I can't wait. You know, I just feel like I do like Garcia. He's brash. He's confident. He's fast. He's electrifying. But he does leave himself open for counters because Luke Campbell was finding a home for that left all night. You know what I mean? He was jabbing him to the body and then he was catching him with the with the left, the hooks. And, but then I just felt like he just didn't have the confidence. I don't think he had the, the confidence to sit in the pocket and have a little fight. You know what I mean? Because he was boxing and moving a lot. And you can see he was stumbling around at times. But I felt like if he held his ground a little bit more, I think the punches he was delivering might have had a bit more of a effect. But I just feel like, listen, all any of them could beat each other on any given night, I think. But it's going to be interesting to see. But that speed, though, what Garcia's got, could be the deciding factor. And he's got a little bit of power in there. But Tia Fuma Lopez punches like a mule. Javante Davis punches like a mule. And Devin Haney can, he can sit in the pocket and roll and ride shots and counter. So it's going to be interesting when they all face each other and see who comes out on top. You're going to be watching, Jazza? I don't mind. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, what, 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 what I can say is that um, the kid guys, yeah, I was super, super impressed. I used to think he was a bit of a fun boy. And I've seen, I've seen it all that. We'll see when he when he fights someone who's really good. And then he, and I thought, if he can beat Luke Campbell, then, you know, I'll give him his credit. And then i seen the next day, he stopped Luke Campbell and thought, fuck me, this kid's good. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Am, am I allowed to, am I allowed to swear? Say again? Am I allowed to swear, by the way? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's past nine o'clock. You're okay. So, um, okay. Well, listen. We'll st- we'll start the title. Can, can I just ask very quickly? Can you just show us a picture of what's on the wall behind you there? Because it, it looks impressive. The, the picture. The picture and the belts. Let's have a quick gander. It's impressive, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Georgie Vaughan, Gary Matthews, we coaches. Yeah, well, and that's the and that's the team to take on Josh Warrington next. We hope. Yes, yeah. Georgie Vaughan and Teddy Matthews every morning. Georgie's eighty three years old, my coach, and he's on the hills wow. having with me every morning. He's he's some 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 man. He's so inspirational, and you know I just want to make him and Derry and me I mean old my old team proud really. So yeah, I'll be doing it for them and the older the older me city on behalf of everyone really. So twenty twenty one. Could be the end. And Dean and myself have said this to a couple of guys now. We'll say it to you, to you as well, Jazz. If slash when, I'll let you cross out whichever is appropriate. If slash when you go and get that belt, are you going to come back on and show us? Too right. <laughs> I'll, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll be back and I'll, and I'll be calling out someone else. Do you want... Do you want... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be <laughs> No, I won't. But I'll be back with my belt. I'll be in six months' time. I'll be back with a belt. Okay, we'll hold we'll you hold to it. To that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> set, set, set your reminder, um, Dean. Set your reminder, uh, and we won't ask you about any other fights that happen in between now and then because you don't watch boxing. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I'll be watching most of the fights. So I'll keep in tab, and we'll know what's going on. <laughs> Not like you, Jasmine, mate. <laughs> well, well yeah, listen man, boys it's been... thank, you, thank you for having me on lads I really appreciate your time thank you for having me on appreciate it thanks for coming on man appreciate it oh, it's been a treat have a good one Jazz